Hi, I'm wanting to show you here how we are going to get a rough idea of what our end result is going to look like. We are putting a horizon line in, a rough idea of where the um, creek, lake, whatever you want to call it, riverbed will go, and to all intents and purposes, the moon. Now, I do have a A3 drawn around my canvas that you can possibly see. We are doing light grey uh, as such for the background sky. It is meant to be dark-ish, but not dark, super dark, um, so that you can't see it. And essentially, it only comes down to your horizon line. We will be mixing some other greys in with it. And we have a darker grey. We have, we are leaving out the moon, obviously. And putting some white in it to blend it all together. Now the white will just, uh, once again, pull it all together and create the background for us. We're not doing too much white uh, because of for obvious reasons we need that color for the moon and as you can see the uh, darkish color is tending to be the more dominant color so do watch that however the grays are okay because that essentially is what we want I did a little bit of blue in the beginning but you know, it doesn't have to be blues. Still painting. And we're doing this first because that way we can move down to the bottom. And it makes it nice and easy. We're not working over ourselves. Okay, that's all reasonably blended. And like I said, we are going to go over it, so it's not going to matter. It, it basically is just a background. You can, of course, have it darker if you so desire. There is no restriction on colour. <coughs> we are now doing a rough of the water. And we're bringing that down. I will probably change... Um, the base of it so that it's all coming out and not coming in which is what I've drawn I'm just trying to get that roughed in as a background colour for a starter and again starting at the top and working my way down so that I'm not working over myself and I have room that I'm not getting it on my hand giving it all a chance to dry off a little as I go. Yeah, I did. I've actually got that drawn in, coming in, and I've um, painted it coming out so that it goes in line with the other one. Doesn't change directions. Pretty much just putting in background colours at the moment, base colours, so that we have a basis for getting started. As you can see, that is the general direction that it's going in. Now, I've just filled up with white. I'm going to paint the white in. And I know that that sounds pointless as the canvas is white, but it gives you something to work on. It also gives you a means of taking out any discrepancies that you don't like, uh, mistakes that you've made or whatever, if you deem them mistakes. Um, it gives you a surface to work on, 
basically I like to paint the canvas regardless because you don't know whether or not you're going to have trouble with putting paints down whether or not there's residue left on the canvas from packing whether or not there's it could be anything um, oils when they send them to the shops etc if you buy pre-painted canvases they are already um, painted surfaces and they have a coating on them to stop moisture getting into them if they come by boat to stop um, animals uh, insects moths whatever um, getting on them so they are sprayed prior to leaving wherever you are and of course that translates into possible problems for you just be aware of that if you are using a pre-painted surface that you do need to paint pretty much all the surface just purely and simply if you're going to paint over it as we are in this white section so we are going to put a section down and of course we're painting the moon and we're not worrying too much about whether or not there's some background color on it or whether or not we're um, getting that in the thing because the reality is the moon has shadows etc 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 all we are trying to do is give a basis okay nice and easy now as you can see the base is already done for where we're at so now it's time to put in oh, mixing more colors we're going to put in some more gray and get that started and with your trees you can always do your stems thick and th as these are only background trees I'm not really rolling too too much but you will see me with some of the brush actually rolling it in my hand in my fingers now essentially this creates your thick and thin lines and we're not doing too too many here because these are only the background trees and they are more for show than anything else they are not coming to the foreground they are sitting in the background and they just need to be there as you can see we are now starting to bring down some of the shadowing um, that is happening around the edges and around the stream, lake, pond, whatever you want to call it. There's no particular pattern for these. Only that they are shadows. They are in um, the ground cover as such. And like I said, we are pretty much working to allow um, it to dry off a fraction. As you can see, we do have some white going into the other. It's really not that important. It doesn't look like much at the moment. Um, I am now going through creating a darker blue um, edge along one side of the water because we need it to go into one another so some of it is dark some of it is light it's a little bit of everything we don't want it to 
be too much of anything so we're going to have darks and lights in it giving the paintbrushes a little bit of a wash out doing some black bringing in some base lines for where my trees are going to go and this is the thick part, the trunk of the tree so just looking at where that's going to go a rough idea coming down and you'll see as I do this I'll also that'll be fine for the base of the tree but I'll also start bringing some branches off it at some point and when I do I will be rolling them these uh, little notches branches that have broken off some of those are quite thick so getting in the thick ones first and then bringing the thin ones off them as you can see now essentially I'm not changing the paintbrush getting a little bit better flow happening with um, some water now just lightly on the paintbrush to get the thin lines and heavier on the paintbrush to get the thicker lines I have swapped over to get them a little bit more defined as you can see with the thick paintbrush getting them coming into the base as we're meant to and then taking them out from there really there is no restriction as to where they go or what they do just fill in some of your spaces and have them coming over across the moon there's no real right or wrong this is a snow scene after all I'm going to do the same with the other couple of trees bring them in I'm on a plastic table so it's not really making that much of a difference okay this one's a little bit thinner than not as far forward as the other one and this one is a little bit thicker again you will see that this one is thicker like the front one because it's coming from further down it is actually closer so these are your close trees whereas your others are in the background so they are silhouetted as you can see they are not in the foreground they don't look much like at the moment They're much like trees they are just uh, hanging in there it doesn't matter if you cross over there are no rights and no wrongs and 
And it doesn't matter where you come out from on the trees. Again, no rights, no wrongs. Just trying to make it so that it looks like they are part of the tree and not coming out from nowhere. A little bit of crisscross happening. A bigger one, obviously. And you will have to decide at some point which one's behind and which one's in front which is determined by the uh, fact that that one is further back. But it does get confusing, I must admit. It does get confusing when you actually start painting in your snow on the trees. You really don't know which one's which or where they're coming from you have to look because there's so many branches crossing over one another it looks a little bit like a hodgepodge at the moment but you will see what I'm trying to do as uh, time goes on and how to make it look snow covered. Okay. Again, adding a little bit of uh, dimension to the water. Just using water, not really um, using much else. Using some dark blue there to cover the green, make it a little bit blue green. So that it's not really standing out too too much but it's there it's just subtle and we've got some lights and darks happening now for the trees now these don't look like much until you actually start getting it all happening now there are no rights, no wrongs, no specific um, whether or not you need to do um, them hard, them soft, whether or not you need to have them coming all the way across, whether or not they need to be on the top or the bottom. As you can see, some of them are on the top, some of them are on the bottom depending on where the snow is landing which way the tree is facing um, at some point I put some in all over the tree but this is where it actually starts to look like it's snowing And you wouldn't think that that could make such a difference to the tree, but it does.
And actually looks like it's got snow on it now. And like I said, the background and the moon should also be dry by this stage. Um, because you've only done reasonably light coats and you've put them on fairly um, thinly. Blended them all together. Makes a difference. And it actually looks like it's snowing on the trees. And like I said, there is no um, real pattern to it or design. You just need to make it look like um, nature does. And nature doesn't have a specific um, pattern that they do. In nature, nothing is even. Nothing is... Um, you know, it's just not what you'd expect it to be. Remembering which ones are over and under. It's amazing how fast a painting can change as you're going through and you don't realize until you sort of start finishing oh wow just all of a sudden that's changed and uh, yeah pretty much it doesn't take that amount of time to get it to change running out of white paint and it's starting to get very dirty because it's uh, oh, no can't do it I was going to say it's mixing in with the white the uh, grey background not giving me a true white and the black trees wouldn't be helping they would be fairly uh, wet still especially where I did the thick branches going over some of it because it's just like oh dear it's faded into the background Alright, now with this I've had to go and mix some white as you can see here and put it with a little bit of extra um, water so we're actually making it thin enough to spatter and well me being me have uh, an old toothbrush that I can use so I am just basically making it snow everywhere including in the water and that pretty much other than signing it and framing it of course uh, pretty much finishes what we're trying to do now like I said we've um, only just used the other picture as a template there's no right no wrong no perfect way of doing this no restriction on color no nothing so whatever you want to do you can do go for it and have fun bye